वेलकम बैक यू वॉचिंग दी एन डी टी वी डिटॉल बनेगा स्वस्थ इंडिया कैंपेन ऑल डे ग्रुप ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इन अयोध्या हैव बिन वर्किंग टू शो अस ब्यूटिफुल डिपिक्शन ऑफ सम थिंग्स वी कैन ऑल डू टू स्टे हेल्दी लेट्स गो बैक टू सी इफ दे आर फिनिश्ड एंड वॉट इज लुकिंग लाइक ओवर टू यू मीनाक्षी हम वहीं खड़े हैं जहाँ सुबह थे पर नज़ारा बदल चुका है माहौल बदल चुका है अमित जी के अंदाज में कह सकते हैं कि हम वहाँ खड़े हैं जहाँ से लाइन शुरू होती है और दिखाएंगे आपको कि हमने कैसे उस सफ़ेद वॉल को रंगीन कर दिया है पर उससे पहले हमारे साथ हैं नवदीप रनवा जी जो कि डिविजनल कमिश्नर हैं अयोध्या रीजन के और बहुत ज़्यादा पॉपुलर हैं अपनी मॉर्निंग औचक निरीक्षण के लिए सर जाते हैं और देखते हैं कि चाक चौबंदी कैसी है सफाई कैसी है सर अयोध्या बदल रही है नए नए लोग आ रहे हैं टूरिज्म है और डेवलपमेंट हो रही है ऐसे में इस नगरी की स्वच्छता और स्वास्थ्य का ध्यान के लिए क्या इनिशिएटिव लिए जा रहे हैं देखिए हम लोग यहाँ जितने राजकीय उद्यान हैं उन सब की साफ सफाई कर रहे हैं वहाँ जितने ओपन जिम्स लगे हैं उनको रिपेयर करके जहाँ नहीं लगे वहाँ नए लगा रहे हैं और बहुत सुंदर और साफ़ रख रहे हैं इनके हमारे जितने सरकारी उद्यान हैं इसके अलावा हमारी अयोध्या में सुबह सुबह हम लोग निकल के हमारे सफाई कर्मियों के साथ सफाई अभियान शुरू करते हैं और उनको मोटिवेट और इंस्पायर करते हैं कि उनका काम बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट है इसके साथ ही हमारे अयोध्यावासी जो सुबह मिलते हैं उनको भी हम रिक्वेस्ट करते हैं कि वो भी स्वच्छता में पूरा सहयोग करें क्योंकि केवल सरकारी स्वास्थ्यकर्मी ही स्वच्छता नहीं रख सकते एक बार तो साफ़ कर सकते हैं लेकिन अगर अयोध्यावासी साथ देंगे तो जो धार्मिक नगरी और जो सांस्कृतिक महत्व है वो स्वच्छ भी हमारी अयोध्या होगी थैंक यू सर तो सोसाइटी का साथ जैसे कि हमने शुरू में भी कहा था कि हमेशा रहा है एक नींव है सोसाइटी की पर आइए अब देखते हैं कि पेंटिंग में क्या क्या किया है अमित जी आपने सवाल पूछा था कि क्या है पेंटिंग का अब बन चुकी है और बच्चे ही आपके सवालों का जवाब देंगे बताइए क्या ड्रॉ किया है नमस्ते सर प्रस्तुत कलाकृति के माध्यम से हम इस देश को यह संदेश देना चाहते हैं यदि आप एक स्वच्छ फल खाएंगे तो एक स्वस्थ जीवन पाएंगे आगे बढ़ते हैं और जैसे जैसे हम चलते जा रहे हैं आप देखते जाएंगे कि किस तरह हमारी पेंटिंग अब साइकिल है क्या कहना चाहेंगे नमस्कार ये चित्र हमें ये दर्शाता है कि यदि हमें एक स्वस्थ जीवन चाहिए तो हमें स्वच्छता की ओर एक कदम लेना होगा जिससे हमारा जीवन का पहिया सदा चलता रहे तो जीवन का पहिया चलता रहेगा और इसी तरह ये बी की मुहिम भी चलती रहेगी बताए आपने क्या नमस्ते सर so the two paintings behind here represent the importance of two big aspects for living a healthy life the first painting represents the importance of sanitization in our lives and the second painting represents the importance of yoga for leading a good life i'll go clear ah ek bachchi hai jinhone is painting se prerna pa kar ek kavita bhi likhi hai unse sunte hain ki kya wo kehna cha rahi hain nttv detol ki shandar muhim se डेटॉल की शानदार मुहिम के संदर्भ में मैंने चार पंक्तियां लिखी हैं जो इस प्रकार हैं संपूर्ण धरा पे लहराना है भारत का परचम हमारा स्वस्थ शरीर ही कर सकता है यह शुभ कार्य संपन्न स्वस्थ शरीर होगा तब जब स्वच्छता का पालन करेंगे हम श्री राम के आशीष से अमित जी की प्रेरणा से पूर्ण करेंगे लक्ष्य संपूर्ण स्वास्थ्य का लेते हैं यह प्रणहम लेते हैं यह प्रणहम धन तो अमित जी आप देख ही रहे हैं कि 9 साल से बच्चे आपकी प्रेरणा पाकर किस तरह उत्साहित हैं और अब जब हमारा एक बैंड है और ये पूरा ग्रुप है जिसने आज पूरी इस दीवार को पेंट किया है वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड 200 फीट इन एक्चुअली फोर आवर्स एंड आई चीयर फॉर दिस टीम लेट्स हियर देम आउट जो चेंज ला पा रहे हैं मुजाटो की तरफ से लाते रहेंगे और इस मुहिम से जुड़े रहेंगे थैंक यू एन डी थैंक यू डेटॉल थैंक यू अमित जी फॉर गिविंग अस दिस चांस सो दैट वी कैन शो एंड बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस बिग इवेंट बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप सभी का मेरी तरफ से सब बच्चों को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दीजिएगा 
आपने कहा था ये जिसने साइकिल बनाई थी कि वो जीवन का पहिया चलता रहे मेरा ऐसा मानना है कि वो जीरो एमिशन वाली मशीन है करेक्ट ट्रू थैंक यू सो मच पायल Moving on, India has the largest adolescent population in the world, 253 million adolescents in the age group 10 to 19 years. And these years are a time of sudden physical, mental and emotional changes. In fact, the health status of an adolescent determines the health status in his or her adulthood and many serious diseases in adulthood have their roots in adolescence. We are talking about adolescent health and gender equality in this hour and joining us today are let me introduce the panel we have with us navya naveli nanda co-founder ara health founder project naveli jyotsna mohan bhargav author stone shamed and depressed we also have vitika yadav country head love matters rashmika mandana actor thank you so much for joining us and of course we have ravi bhatnagar director external affairs and partnerships soa record Thank you all so much for joining us um, Rashmika I would like to start with you first when we really talk about India's health 75 years from independence and still when we talk about the amount of abortions that are happening pregnancies do you think really we've moved on and what more should be done to spread awareness how important is it to talk to our children I think um, what we often keep missing out is uh, having that freedom of um, sort of emotion in the family itself because a lot of kids i don't think are very comfortable talking to their parents about the things that they're going through uh example me like i it got me a, it was a really long time since i got comfortable talking to my parents about what i was dealing through so i think um the comfort of speech in the house is where it begins and then goes to school where uh kids need to be more comfortable talking to the teachers about uh, certain things and of course about violence what happens in school it's all very minute yeah. violence what happens in the family it might be very minute but when they grow older when they get mature i think um, it just ex- like it just becomes bigger mm-hmm. and <clears throat> before we know it it's one of the crimes that they've you know uh, created so i think freedom of speech freedom of uh, conveying what they're feeling at home is the beginning of it all to be able to talk to i think that's what you said yeah, and in yeah. fact also telling them the right facts what we were talking mr bachan what you said in the morning yeah i to just i just feel that what she said is a very pertinent point yeah. that uh, a lot of the girls feel very hesitant to speak about it very frankly with members mm-hmm. of their family um i don't know about uh, the other girls but i do believe that they pick a lot of this up from their friends in school and college yeah. and then it remains with them for a lifetime whether it is they are getting the right kind of information or the right kind of advice is something that uh, the ladies themselves will be able to tell yeah. but when they disclose this to a senior adult in the family especially mothers i think they get a better side of the education that needs to be told and some kind of um, giving them a sense of dignity that is very important many people feel that at this stage there is a kind of an impurity that is being instilled in them and um, i don't know whether it's right to say this or not but many religious institutions prevent women from going to temples if they are having their periods and uh, i don't know what is the history behind this and i do not know why they do this um to me it is a sign of recreation how can you stop that exactly fact, exactly i was uh, sorry dr roy were you saying something? no no i'm saying exactly i was coming to that what the point which you came when we were talking on menstruation in fact that something in our country unfortunately it's still a taboo we don't talk about it openly uh, navya i wanted to ask you because you work we've traveled together in a couple of places where you made these menstrual homes uh, Why do you think it's still important? Of course I would like to point out while it's a taboo the access to menstrual products in our country have gone up quite a bit especially because there has an, there has been awareness. But Navya tell us why do you think it's important that there should be more awareness on it and it shouldn't be a taboo it's it's a very natural process. No absolutely and I think um you know like he mentioned it's a sign of life it's a sign of a, a moment in a woman's um you know as she grows older is a point in her life where she's able to give birth and i think that's not something that we should be ashamed of or shy away from 
And I think menstruation, yes, has been a taboo for a long time, but there is progress. I, I'm sitting on stage today with my grandfather talking about periods, and that itself is a, um, is a sign of progression. And the fact that we are sitting on a platform today with many people watching us and having an open conversation about menstruation itself shows that we have progressed, not just as women, but as a country. And I think it's great that not just the women, but the men have also joined in on this mission of making menstruation a, a destigmatized conversation. And I think more importantly, at home, uh, because change for me always begins at home. And I feel that women should feel comfortable and safe about their own bodies in their own homes before going out into society and talking about that. And I think I was fortunate, fortunate enough to grow up in a home where I felt comfortable having these conversations. That's, that's really important. Yeah. Um, Vitika, you know, we just spoke about taboo subjects and things we can and cannot discuss and what we feel comfortable with. So what are the main vulnerabilities that adolescents and youth face in India considering the lack of access, you know, to information, to counseling, to other services? Because there seems to be, you don't, it, it happens in a few schools, but they're in the more sort of affluent, maybe the more open, sort of more liberal, you know, areas. But I'm talking across the board because if we look at the incidences of teenage pregnancies, if we look at the growing instances of STDs in, in youth, if we look at all of these issues, even consent, you know, something like consent not being understood by boys and girls, um, where are we not, like, where is this huge gap? Where are we failing? Um, I think first and foremost, of course, the fact that we do not have comprehensive sexuality education and we do not want to think about it or perhaps have a strategy and approach to move towards that is really the big problem because we do not want to acknowledge that it is important. Uh, I guess the bigger problem is that we eventually want to tackle teenage pregnancy, we want to tackle, you know, sort of uh, uh, the burden of contraception largely being in women, but we tend to talk about it at a much later stage with the population that we're talking about. And the fact is that we need to talk about this at a very fundamental and foundational level. If we are going to start talking about it when they're in schools, you know, really building that understanding around consent, around boundaries, that is when things are going to change. So I think as, as, uh, as a society, I think policymakers, educators, parents, everybody needs to be a part of this process. Everybody needs to understand it's high time. We need to start having these conversations. And I also very strongly feel that we always look for special moments to have these conversations. And that's really where the big problem is. The journey of unlearning is when we start to have these conversations every single day. You know, these can be your dining table conversations, wherever you are. Every little moment is an opportunity. A child would often come and ask you, oh, you said somebody's pregnant. What does pregnancy all about? What does that really mean? So agency, talking about consent, I think the fact that we are so late by the time we have these conversations really, you know, sort of, I think we, we lose we lose a lot of things there. Uh, Jyotsna, thanks very much for joining us. Um, your absolutely excellent book, uh, which actually I reviewed, and uh, it's had, it had a much bigger impact than I could even imagine. Well done. Thanks. Really a lot of work gone into that. But there's still a long way to go, and you've had an impact, but what do you think still needs to be done? What would you like to see? What steps would you like to be seen taken? Doc has already mentioned, I think uh, it begins with conversations. Uh, what I found when writing the books was that a, conversations are missing. I, some of us are fortunate, I'm fortunate, Swati is fortunate, Navya is fortunate, you know. We, we brought up in homes where these conversations are, are normal. But even now, around my children's friends, these conversations are not normal. And these are, these are children who are going to good schools, you know, good colleges. So imagine what you have to think about the marginalized, the LGBT, the rural. These conversations need to firstly go mainstream. Secondly, I think the issue still remains about acceptance. If we don't accept that there's a problem, how are we going to, you know, go out and look for a solution? I think to me, that is critical to accept that there's an issue and then work around it. Because if, if we don't accept, how are resources going to reach the women? How, how are resources going to reach the adolescents? How are they going to know where to go? At the moment, the conversations then rest, are restricted to their peers. You know, they, they look at what the peers are telling them. They will go to these shady clinics, which is why I think it's brilliant. Uh, the Supreme Court's uh, landmark judgment on abortion for uh, single women as well to uh, equal rights for abortion. But, what is really what I found when I was writing the book was that girls and children didn't know where to go. 
I mean, they, they don't know who to speak with. And so then they listen to their children, to their friends who would send them to shady, uh, you know, clinics where it, it compromises their health. And we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, spotlight on these uh, clinics, which have, uh, you know, where liposuction surgeries and all of these have gone wrong, but nobody's really focused on these abortion clinics and what they are doing to our children. So I think a lot of work still needs to be done in bringing this conversation firstly to the mainstream. And, you know, what has also complicated, Doc, is the fact that COVID has uh, shrunk the spaces. The safeguards were not as much as we would have liked in the beginning, but was it, what has happened is also that those safe spaces for the girls, the mothers, the sisters have got compromised during COVID. Families where jobs have gone, finances have gone, you know, people have lost uh, uh, members. It has been very easy to take it out on the women, on the girls, on the wives, or, you know, where, where we have COVID orphans, it is very easy for families to just get them married off. But of course, domestic abuse and sexual abuse is the biggest secret in our company, the, in our country. And data is not always reflecting of what is on the ground. So I think we need to also work on the ground to get more data, more accurate data. But that can only happen when conversations open up and when things go mainstream. Right, right, right. You know, one of the things that, uh, Ravi, you know, we, when we look at, if you take birth control that's available, the burden is a lot on the women because, you know, for a woman to go find an oral contraceptive, it's not easy to get it over the counter. You need to go to a doctor. So there, there's a problem because if you're a young girl, then your issues of privacy with the doctor, you know, what if the doctor tells the family, where are you going to do all this? So then if you leave the responsibility of birth control so that the boys have to use a condom, then the problem is you, the entire power of that relationship was in the hands of the boy, right? So this is a massive problem, and this is because in school levels and stuff, we just don't talk about this. Sex education isn't a thing that's there, and it's one of the most critical things that we need to have in our schools to make it normal for everyone to understand that it's bodily functions, people change, it's hormones, it's completely natural, but we just don't have this at all. Bring and it into the mainstream. Exactly. And, you're working, mainstream. In and you're working in the Northeast with the birds and bees, so just, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Like, uh, it's very interesting, like, uh, three years back, how we started the program in six states in the Northeast. It was very difficult, a lot of... Uh, a lot of barriers were there to start the program, but there's a lot of support from the government now. And uh, Vitika really helped us when we were formulating the curriculum. And what we have seen is basically, you know, there are very basic questions, but uh, teachers actually coming forward with. Like, girls are liking girls in the school, like, they were very shy, now they can actually ask. We have also seen out of six, uh, you know, states, four states have actually demonstrated uh, fewer number of uh, teen pregnancies. Uh, I can say like this program is the only program which focuses on this in the Northeast. And if that is happening, and if that is true, then it's one of the biggest achievement of this program over the years. Second thing is out of six states, two states have witnessed a significant decrease in the new STI infections. That is one is Manipur and second is Nagaland. And when we see the data and statistics, I'm sure like there's a long way to go, but there is some there's some change which is happening. And I'm very positive, like you know, other states will also take this curriculum. We have translated recently the curriculum in Hindi. So that in the bigger states like UP, in Chhattisgarh, in Madhya Pradesh, in Rajasthan, we can take this curriculum. I, I mean say like uh, the characters which are there, like Sia, Max and others, uh, those characters need re, uh, renaming based on the cultural context of uh, those states but the content remain the same and we are also seeing like uh, uh, there are more than 3000 tier a authors in the northeast actually writing about these subjects now there was a time when we started the whole world cloud universe was just talking about the naga fights and you know uh, the terrorism and all which has changed to the birds and the bees talk adolescent health stis and discussions have started happening on that. So the conversation has started, which is really good. You've seen the impact on ground. We are going to be talking about mental well-being as well, especially when it comes to adolescence, as well as gender, which begins at home. Rashmika, but if your movie Goodbye releases, first of all, tell us how was the experience to work with Mr. Bachchan. And secondly, you know, it's a family drama where there is a loss of a loved one. Um, how, and we've all been through challenging times during the COVID-19 pandemic specifically. How does one 
manage emotional, I mean mental well-being and the emotional quotient, how should we keep it high? First of all, I think it's, uh, I'm extremely grateful that I got to work with Sir uh, because of course it's uh, huge because this is my first Hindi film uh, and that being, I already got to work with Bachchan Sir so, which is amazing, <laughs> I'm really grateful. Um, coming to how do I deal with... Um, the experience uh, has been mutual. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, I think how to deal with grief or um, keep it anything which is so heavy as losing someone so close to you uh, would, I just believe in being able to just convey what's in your heart truly because uh, what happens is we sort of like tend to uh, bottle up all the feelings and without you knowing it one day it's going to explode and one day it might uh, explode in terms of okay getting very aggressive uh, in terms of, uh, you know, communication or can even get to a point where it's suicidal act, you know. Uh, so it can get either ways, but I just feel like um, when you have people who actually care for you, when you have people who actually, uh, you know, love you, it's always good to sort of like communicate with them regardless of what it is um, and just getting out what's in your heart out there, yeah, honestly. Because otherwise, how else are you going to get uh, over the loss, right? Yeah. I think that's very important. And always writing. Yeah. Like maintain a diary, just, just somehow get it out of your heart talk, is what I believe. Out. That's... Talk out. Yeah. Just moving a little bit uh, towards gender. Uh, Navya, according to the Global Gender Gap Report 2022, India ranks 135 out of 146 countries. It's gone down. Gender inequality is still a major barrier when we talk about health and development in India. We always see the women eat food later so that's why hence they are anemic or they are malnourished as a gender equality activist also which is the work you've been doing for a while do you see the narrowing of the gender divide do you see that the youngsters the girls of today are speaking up is that time changing absolutely i think a lot of younger girls feel more confident about themselves and the role that they play in society i've personally through my interactions over the last two years have met a lot of young girls who are more confident about their bodies, their minds, uh, they're very ambitious and I think that they're definitely motivated to make a difference and bridge the gap. Uh, but this is something I've always said is that when it comes to empowering women and um, building the gap to gender equality, it's not just the responsibility of a woman but equally the responsibility of men um, as equal parts of society to help bridge that gap. And um, you know, as much as we'd love to see younger girls, I'd love to see younger boys as well uh, take the initiative to bridge that gap. Actually, I'm amazed at the work you're doing. I mean, when you joined us last time, I was just, uh, it's, it's really, and you're sticking with it over years. How important is what other people are saying is just to share it with somebody, preferably somebody close to you. Just get it off your chest. Absolutely. I think mental health being a conversation that, um, you know, we're having a lot more often now and on much larger platforms is extremely mm. important because I feel that, um, you know, we learn a lot from the elders, from people on TV and I think that, you know, them especially being public figures and talking about it so openly will so encourage a lot share, of... So share, share, share. Yes, That's yeah, the absolutely. kind of message that you would give. Absolutely. Make just it get mainstream, it out to talk, as said. To share, to not just share on platforms like this, but at home with your yeah. families, with your yeah. teachers, with your friends. Yeah, very important. We were talking about this whole issue of, of impurity and how yes. uh, in the villages uh, the stigma still exists. Yeah, and like, uh, Navya, maybe you'd like to tell them about yeah. the kind of homes that you've been building. <coughs> so we worked on a project last year um, called Period Positive Homes and it was, um, I think Amika had an opportunity to visit as well. It was based in um, a village in Gacharoli, Maharashtra. And our on-ground partners, Mukul Madhav Foundation, have been working there for a long time. And they brought to our attention that uh, there is a custom that's practiced there where they banish women outside the village uh, during uh, their menstrual cycle every month for five to six days. And these women are actually forced to stay in open fields with no roof over their head, Shutting. no toilets, no sanitation, um, and definitely no access to menstrual hygiene products. So. Um, you know, with our partners, we went in and built six period positive homes, which is the name that we've given it, so that when these women are, you know, sent out of their villages, they're able to stay in these stay homes and that they are also able to access menstrual products. 
obviously you know going in and trying to change a mindset takes a lot of time That'll but the next step is to really go in and sensitize them towards why a practice like this can be so harmful yes. um, not just for women but even for the next generation of younger girls who grow up seeing their mothers being sent That's out of their homes yeah. And just the whole thing of them being, you know, in a safe area, a safe zone. I think that was the biggest thing. At least I, when I went, girls were actually studying in that home, so they were very happy to be in a, you know, close environment, a safe environment. I had the opportunity during one of the shows that I do, where one of these stigmas was expressed in a rather ugly manner. They said we send them out because the blood that they drop invites wild animals. What? And therefore, we are afraid, and therefore they're sent off, and we don't take responsibility. I mean, it's outrageous, outrageous, yeah. absolutely yeah. outrageous. I think the media so, needs to focus on this and make get yeah. involved in absolutely. change. If I could share an instance uh, during an interaction with a 12-year-old girl once, uh, she mentioned that when she got her first period, she thought her blood would be blue because on sanitary pad ads, for the longest time, we saw blue liquid being poured instead of red. Right. So that kind of miscommunication can happen very easily when you know big companies or even media platforms don't communicate with transparency. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's important. Yeah. I think you're working so, on a most crucial area. It's just thank like thank you so much. I think all the youngsters we have today. I mean, Vitika. I mean, all Rashmika. All of them, Navya. You know, to talk about something like this on a platform and something so critical and important is very basic, like we say. But it's very, very important. And now some really special guests this evening. You don't want to miss this segment because these guests will melt your heart. Let's go to Punjab now, where Mr. Newton Sidhu is with our colleague Arun Singh. Arun, over to you. Well, Ambika, I am in a beautiful company right now. I'm coming to you from Dera Basi, that's under Mohali district. And meet Stella. She's very photogenic. But she's not just a pretty face because she's very capable as well. She's a therapy dog and she offers help when someone is uh, having an anxiety attack or she can also detect depression as well. And someone who takes full responsibility of the training is Mr. Newton Sidhu, who runs this canine uh, training and breeding institute. A very warm welcome, Mr. Sidhu. Hi, good I evening. must say, Stella is a beautiful dog. Thank you. And uh, can you tell us how did you identify her skills and how she's been able to help patients suffering through several mental health problems? See, this all started when it was during the pandemic time. We have been training dogs for uh, paramilitary forces, state police forces. But during pandemic, we came out with an idea because I had seen that the dogs, they have been helping the people who are into depression or who have anxiety attacks or the fits. So already I had this uh, toy poodle with me. So I started training her, started taking her out with a lot of old couples who were staying in my neighborhood. And there, well, then she started interacting with them and they uh, started coming out of their anxiety things. And even with the kids, old uh, couples also. Any, any special incident that you can share that you had probably with your family or... or I, I will just tell you, there's a old lady who's uh, living alone and she's a, a good artist there. Mm -hmm. She was uh, she went into depression and she uh, happens to be my neighbor. So one day my mom told me that she's into this. I started taking her there and you won't believe she's uh, started uh, painting again. And Stella is the one and she uh, did an interview also back with your channel almost uh, two years back. So she is she's in, media friendly too. Yeah, she's media friendly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what. So but dogs, she, dogs can. I mean, your dogs can also detect diabetes, cancer. How does that happen? How do you train them for that? See, uh, if we come to diabetes, diabetes uh, first it's a long drawn process which takes up to eight months to nine months time where we start doing all these things. But uh, the way we start is we start taking the saliva of the patients initially, then the sweat. After that, because dogs can identify somewhere around 18,000 different scents, mm -hmm. they can differentiate between them. So we start imprinting the dogs on that. Okay. So once they, we start imprinting on that, they start identifying it. Suppose your uh, sugar level is going down, you will start sweating. Once the sweat comes, they identify it. And, they and how bark. do they communicate? Oh. Uh, they will bark. Otherwise, this dog doesn't bark. They only bark when they identify there's some uh, problem with you, there's some issue with you. Because uh, if you have seen a movie back there, the Munna Bhai, they say it's the chemical locha in your brain. So they identify that chemical locha, what happens. So they bark. And that is the only part. 
Right, and don't get confused by this cute picture that we're presenting. I mean, uh, at the background, you can see them, all those feisty dogs as well. Mr. Sidhu has been uh, providing these dogs and also training these dogs for forces across yeah, are, the yeah. nation. Yeah, we have been doing that right from uh, Sikkim to Manipur to JNK till Kerala. We have been training dogs for on different trades, right from detection of explosives, narcotics. We have been doing that. Okay. Yeah. And, and Stella is definitely very happy for this appearance on Banega Swast India Punjabi. Samal Andi, sir? Bilkul Andi, you know Punjabi Andi. You can uh, tell her ki chalo chaliye, sir, Karan. So she becomes excited and she's ready to go for a walk. That's what it is. Now, the moment I've said chalo chaliye, Stella, chaliye, sir, Karan? <laughs> she will start looking at me that so I'm Stella going to... Di, Stella, di, sayar da time ho gaya, so we'll, we'll uh, not keep her holding here. Uh, but that's all that we had from Dera Basti. But once again, congratulations on the effort that you've been showing and the way dogs have actually come forward in uh, achieving this target that we have of Sampoorn Swaste. With that, we're slipping into a short break, but a lot more coming on the other side. Keep watching NDTV.